Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Every day there are countless books and articles that are published offering the key on how to make your business a success. It's easy to feel overwhelmed trying to keep up and run your business. That's why Deb Creer created the Business Power Hour. Keep up on the latest trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. Let the Business Power Hour do the heavy work for you. Good morning, good morning. I am Deb Creer, and I am passionate about giving professionals the tools that they need to make themselves and their businesses as successful as possible. And today we're going to have so much fun because we're going to be talking to an entrepreneur who has had his shares of successes and his shares of not successes. Um, you know, and, and, but I always love hearing about that because I think when we start a business, especially if we're not really experienced, when things don't go well, we take it as a personal reflection. We think, oh my gosh, I shouldn't be doing this. I'm not smart enough, talented enough, all these various things. And so it's good to hear other people who have ultimately become successful talk about things that you know might have not gone right to start with. Um, so please join me in welcoming Wally Gustafson to our program today. Welcome, Wally. Thank you, Deb. It's great to be with you today. I really appreciate you having me on. Great. Well, let me tell people just a little bit about you, and then we will dive into this. So Wally Gustafson is a business owner with more than 25 years of business experience. He's had investors in a startup company that eventually failed. Without investors, he turned a basement business into a multi-million dollar online retail business. He's seen a 10-year trend of 25% year-over-year growth to be followed by several years of 30% decline. Wally has learned more about business through his failure than his success. He is a graduate of the Olin School of Business at Washington University in St. Louis, where he got an MBA, and he currently specializes in product development and overseas manufacturing. On top of business ownership, Wally is an author. We're going to talk a little bit about his book, illustrator and voice actor. He recently launched the podcast, The Ben and Wally Show, which is a father-son YouTube show and podcast that discusses lighthearted topics in the world of sports, life, movies, and news while showcasing the joy of a strong father-son relationship. So again, Wally, welcome. Thank you. I appreciate that intro and uh, I'm looking forward to talking to you today. Great. You know, and, and I love hearing about, you know, the, the variety of things in your background. And you have taken kind of a circ circuitous route to get where you are today. Tell us a little bit more about that. How did you discover that, that this is your passion? Well, and you know what, I think the sad thing is it probably wasn't until maybe a year ago that I could really fully define mm -hmm. what it was. I, I sort of was doing what I felt like I was right. good at, but I had mm -hmm. never defined it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I spent eight and a half years or so in a corporate environment. Um, it was a great learning experience. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, probably wasn't the best fit for me, mm -hmm. um, at least in that particular role. And what I've realized over time is that I'm a... I'm a creator, a mm -hmm. builder. So okay. I like to make mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm less of a um, person that's just going to manage it, just sort of keep things status, status mm -hmm. quo. Mm -hmm. I need to always be making something. And okay. so from that sometimes comes me trying things that maybe I shouldn't try. And my wife would probably tell you that, that she looks <laughs> at me and says, are we going to make any money off of this? And right. I'm like, right. I, mm -hmm. I don't know, <laughs> but, but, but I'm doing it anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but I've learned over time that when I'm making something, mm -hmm. whether it's a product or a business or a service, that's when I'm most fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And when I'm most energetic about getting up and sort mm -hmm. of digging into what we're doing that day. Right. I love it. Well, I mentioned your book, which is You Are Not a Loser. Hold it up. Be Vanna. Show us what it sure. looks like. <laughs> right here. It's a, it's a great book, um, and I had a, a digital version, which is, is why I didn't uh, hold mine up, because that's just not real. Yeah, you know, I was like, whatever. Um, and first, as I was reading it, I thought, okay, your wife is a saint. <laughs> mm -hmm. <She laughs> you know? is. And, and really, where would we be if it wasn't for spouses that, mm -hmm. you know, they kind of shake their heads, they wonder, they get a bit curious, but they're there. They're in our corner. 
Um, you know, and, and, and that's, that's always great. But, you know, I mentioned that you're doing your passion. And it's funny because one of the things that, that you talk about in your book, and I think this is something that small business owners and entrepreneurs especially get caught up in is we're all told to do what you love. And then, of course, there's the, if you're doing what you love, it's not work. <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, you, you still have to invoice. There are still lots of things that you don't like doing. But in your book, you talk about the fact that you might not love what you do, but what it does is gives you the ability to be doing the stuff that you really do love, which is spending time with your family, spending time with your church, all of those various things. And I think that's sometimes where we get lost as we think the job, the company, the product, the service, the whatever has to be the be all end all when it's really in most cases, the, the, the means to that end of being able to do what we love. Yeah. And you know, I, the, the standard that's sort of set for you in society is that your success is measured by a number or right. uh, some sort of accumulation of mm -hmm. wealth. And I'm not saying that that isn't part of it. Right. Um, but what I'm saying is that um, I don't think I love internet retail. <laughs> now, I love, mm -hmm. you know, making the products that right. we sell, designing mm -hmm. and developing mm -hmm. them. But what I really do love is the flexibility that I've had in my mm -hmm. job. So my kids are a little older now, 19 and 16, mm -hmm. but when they were little, you have the second grade Valentine's day uh, party mm -hmm. in class. I just went. Right. And that doesn't mm -hmm. always happen in mm -hmm. a corporate environment. So mm -hmm. I know people that work in those environments and have been very successful, but it's like, yeah, you know, I haven't been to mm -hmm. uh, my son's past four games because mm -hmm. I've been traveling or right. I've been doing this. And I've just been able to schedule things around mm -hmm. my right. family right. and my kids haven't articulated it, but I do know that they know that mm -hmm. I was there for mm -hmm. those things. And for right. me, that was a trade off that was definitely worth it. Mm -hmm. Well, and they, I'm sure noticed when other parents weren't there and, you know, and, and I, I hope they didn't just, you know, kind of think, Oh, well, dad's always going to be there. Yeah. Whatever. Um, you know, I, I hope that they really do appreciate the fact that you were there because it is difficult, um, you know, to, to be there for everything for them. Um, you know, and, and, and I think it really does make a difference, even if it is just the second grade Valentine. Um, you know, of course, when thing, you know, as they get older, things do take on more importance, but mm -hmm. we remember that, that mom or dad didn't make it to our third grade birthday party or, um, you know, those things like that. And, and it's like, well, were they at every basketball game? Um, maybe. <laughs> you know? Um, right. you know, and, and so I love that, that what you do is great. It's fun. You enjoy it, but it, it allows you to do the things that you love. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, in our case, my wife is a pediatric nurse practitioner. She oh. can't leave. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, that allowed us to have a parent present mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. many of those days when right. the event was happening during a traditional work mm -hmm. hour. Right. Yeah. And that is, of course, the tricky thing is school things, especially when kids are younger, happen during the day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? and, right. and, and so it's just difficult for, for you know, many people to, to get away. And it's difficult even if you own the business, if you're the, you know, the, the, the entrepreneur or whatever, you have to decide, am I going to go to that business meeting, that networking event? or see my kids. You know what? I'm going to go see my kids. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. It's been, it's, I, I wouldn't trade it for sure. Right. right. You know, and, and hopefully what has happened is your kids have seen how important that is when they start having kids. Um, you know, that, that it's just, you know, and, and, but they also know, you know, because clearly their mom loves them and is devoted to them, but she couldn't be there for everything. Um, you know, and, and so it's not that there was something wrong with not being there. It was just great that you were able to be there. Right. And you know, and the funny thing is that I do see, you know, my daughter has a very entrepreneurial spirit ah. about her. And so she is, I've seen that. Mm -hmm. There's a part of me that sometimes goes, I sure hope they don't think that, you know, that they should try everything that comes through their mind, like mm -hmm. their dad has done. <laughs> You know, I might not be setting the best example there because I just tend to say, well, let's just try it. We'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. But I do love, though, that that sort of has, this has mm -hmm. also shown them, they've right. seen a traditional environment mm -hmm. from their yeah. mom, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then they've seen a less traditional environment mm -hmm. from their dad. Right. And it's exposed them to different mm -hmm. ways of 
making a living and uh, mm -hmm. having right. a job for sure. Right. Well, and it shows that there's combinations. There's all sorts of things that they can be doing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, it, it, it was interesting as I was reading your bio and, and everything. It, it, of course, dawned on me that right now we are, you know, as, as we're recording this and even when this airs, in the middle of the pandemic, you know, things are still shut down, all sorts of weirdness. And, you know, I, I wanted to know how that has affected you because you're, you're on, you're, you sell your product on the internet, mm -hmm. which has got to be a boon. You know, a lot of people are like, I'm not going in a store and I'm not sure I'm going in a store again. Mm -hmm. um, but you're also dealing with, you know, as, as you mentioned, overseas production, overseas development, you know, and, and so how has all of this been a challenge? Yeah, I'll start back with the, um, I'll work my way forward. So we had placed orders back in November and December mm -hmm. that started production. Mm -hmm. We knew that they always take a, about a month off for Chinese right. New Year. Mm -hmm. And then they went on Chinese New Year mm -hmm. and didn't come and back. And didn't come back. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you're like, oh my gosh, now I'm selling out of product. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is going to impact sales. And naively, mm -hmm. that's sort of what I thought was, okay, this is just going to be the, right. um, this is how it's going to impact me is that mm -hmm. I might have to let someone go just mm -hmm. because we're going to see a decline in sales because I'm running out of product mm -hmm. to sell. Mm -hmm. Well, they came back and were ready to ramp up. They ramped up, mm -hmm. they started making it. And what we saw probably middle of March. Mm -hmm. So although I sell online, it's like my business fell off a cliff. Right. No. Business is slowly mm -hmm. climbing. We've looked at charts and graphs and just tried to see, you know, get a sense. And they for it. change every day. <laughs> but what's so what's crazy is then I got to where I was like, uh, well, now I have the product ready, mm -hmm. and I go, mm, cash flow is really tight. Mm -hmm. How are we going to flow this out? Right. Um, but the benefit is, is because the manufacturers overseas mm -hmm. have been through this, mm -hmm. they've been so amazingly flexible. So normally. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. If I have 10,000 shirts on order mm -hmm. with them, which is what I did, mm -hmm. they, would, they would just ship it at one time. Right. I'm like, look. And they you. want their money right then. Exactly. And they said, look, we'll do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. All right, great. Here's your May, June, July, August deliveries. Mm -hmm. Ship on these dates. They're like, perfect. Mm -hmm. Two of them said, look, we're going to ship it. Pay us in August. Wow. And that's because we've done a business with them for a long time, but you're mm -hmm. like, boy, this has really helped because right. now it's allowed mm -hmm. me to adjust some of this and bring mm -hmm. different product, maybe from vendors that I don't mm -hmm. have as strong of a relationship with, but I know that we can get all this product in. We're definitely seeing business in, uh, on, the, on uh, the upward tick. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I sell a lot of apparel items. Right. That aren't truly essential. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and the we're joke, not going out and about. Right. So we're, we're not going out and about. Lots of people started on Zoom calls with, you know, looking nice. All right. And as mm -hmm. things changed, you saw a lot of people posting their picture. Mm -hmm. or you saw guys in sweatshirts and hats and mm -hmm. they're just not buying right. truly non-essential stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you were selling truly essential items, mm -hmm. your business went through the roof. Right. But if you're selling plaid shirts and mm -hmm. blazers and pink pants and mm -hmm. it, whatever, all those oh, items. pants, are, no. Uh -uh. Nobody's buying There's, pants at all. <laughs> <laughs> They're just not buying it. So we're looking at it saying, we know we've got the right product. Mm -hmm. It's eventually going to uh, turn around. Mm -hmm. But it's probably, I, honestly, I think we're looking at this time next year mm -hmm. before things are back to what oh, we yeah. might classify as normal. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I have been saying, you know, at least six months. In six months, we should start seeing kind of the trends as to how things are going to be. Um, you know, and, and, but yeah, and, and part of that's going to be our, you know, are most people still going to be working from home? Um, you know, so we will just be doing zoom and, and not buying fancy pants, you know, so shorts and sweats will be our, our apparel right. from the, the waist down. Um, and as you said, you know, we're getting much more casual from the top up. I love the story of the guy. Now I've only seen it once, but he was a programmer. So, mm -hmm. you know, smart dude, he actually programmed an AI. That that was and and it was good. I mean, people didn't realize it wasn't him in front of the Zoom camera until there were a couple of times where he just answered wrong. glitched out or yeah, 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 you know, and and so, but yeah, so you, we've we've gotten much more. But I think even as things start to go back to normal, and I use that word very cautiously, um, 
I think we are going to do a lot more Zoom, I think, um, you know, or, or any, whatever the, the platform is that you're using, because I think we're expanding our networks. We're expanding how we're doing business. We really are figuring out, do I have to drive an hour each way, because I live in Atlanta, um, mm -hmm. to go to a 15-minute meeting? Hmm, maybe I can do this on Zoom. Um, I've been doing a thing, oh gosh, we're now into our second, maybe even third month of doing this of an online networking meeting, um, you know, and, and it, it's, it's great because we have people from multiple states uh, and, you know, and, and sometimes it's the same people, sometimes it's totally new people, but it's people that would not normally be meeting and talking to each other. And the cool thing is they've been telling me privately, oh my gosh, I connected with this person and we did this. I connected with that person and we did this. And so the networking part really is working. Yeah. And the other thing I'm saying is um, it's, it's the borders are disappearing also for even items like healthcare. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, you might still want to work with your old primary care mm -hmm. physician, but mm -hmm. you've moved. Well, guess mm -hmm. what? Now they're doing yeah. a lot of these mm -hmm. through zoom. Mm -hmm. And so the downsides of the pandemic are creating new opportunities mm -hmm. for us. And it's right. just figuring out, how do we right. capitalize on those opportunities mm -hmm. to, to improve our lives mm -hmm. and hopefully improve our business mm -hmm. in the long term? Right. You know, and, and I, I you know, kind of alluded to this. I think online shopping is definitely going to be something that, that goes up. Um, you know, there are a, the, a groceries, maybe, maybe not. I, you know, it's, that's, that's kind of one of those things. I always have my list. Now I, I've set foot in a grocery store four times in three mm -hmm. months. My husband goes and, right. and does our grocery I'm shopping. I'm the designated shopper. Yep. They, they, you know, I'm the most expendable in the right. family. Yeah. Yeah. Your me. wife. Yeah. She's in the, and, <laughs> and with what she does, she's at enough risk. So we don't right. add to it. Um, and, and, but we haven't online shopped, um, you know, now could we? Sure. I mean, you know, there's, but, and, mm -hmm. but I'm one of those when I'm in the grocery store and this is why I've gone to the store. I've done the up and down every aisle thing to restock, you know, it was, it was things that I needed that I couldn't always remember to put on the list for my husband to get. Um, mm -hmm. but it was like, oh yeah, we're low on this and, you know, and, and all of those things. So, so that way I was kind of doing those things. But, you know, I, I'm, and maybe I'm just not organized to do all of my grocery shopping online. But I think there's going to be a lot of other things that people are going to say, you know, I don't need to go to a store anymore. I can go to Amazon, um, you know, and, and or, you know, whatever it is and do my shopping that way. It's easier, faster, in many cases, cheaper, um, you know, and, and so I think that really is going to be an area that's going to, to massively go up. Right. And, you know, we're seeing that we've had some discussions internally because, um, you know, Amazon is what it is. It's massive, mm -hmm. but we do sell on other platforms. And we just, you know, as someone who has been in the online mm -hmm. space for a long time, I, I shop online. But what right. I, you don't realize is close to half of America still doesn't right. regularly shop mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. And what we've seen on some of the smaller platforms mm -hmm is really significant growth hmm. because we, we have to believe people who are sort of, have been forced to shop online mm -hmm. are now learning how to do it. Right. Um, so I do believe long-term, this is going to pay even bigger mm -hmm. dividends for online retail mm -hmm. sales, online services, whatever they might be. Right. Yeah. And I was also thinking one of the things is, is, you know, in your book, at least you talk about the fact that quite a bit of your product is sold through Amazon, through mm -hmm. Amazon fulfillment, which means Correct. it's Amazon's employees, you know, and, and so, you know, I'm, I'm sure that your business, you know, your staff, you know, may have, have been impacted, but the majority of your people aren't your people. Correct. Right. No. And so there's a trade off there when you use Amazon services, it really mm -hmm. is a, um, there's a margin hit to that. Right, because right, fees... they want paid. <laughs> yeah, and their fees have gone up dramatically mm -hmm. over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, but there also is, when we do a really disproportionate amount of our business mm -hmm. in fourth quarter, mm -hmm. the staffing requirements to prepare right. for fourth quarter mm -hmm. are such a headache mm -hmm. and so hard mm -hmm. to find people that are willing to show up for two months mm -hmm. that that became such a great answer mm -hmm. to those sort of uh, right. businesses. And mm -hmm. I really didn't want to be in the fulfillment business mm -hmm. again. So that is not something that 
you know, got me excited to go, okay, so-and-so didn't show up today. Now who mm-hmm. am I going to have fill in for? Yeah. for? Mm-hmm. I'm going to be out there packing orders until one in the morning. And that's really what we'd see. And mm-hmm. basically dad would ruin, dad meaning me, would ruin mm-hmm. the holidays every year because I'd be tired and crabby. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, this was a way to sort of mitigate some of that. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Now, of course, there is the risk, and especially in times of a pandemic, where when you're using something like Amazon, you know, if, if they have an issue, then you're in big trouble, but you know, it's, it, 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 you know, things happen all the time, you know, and, and um, I saw, unfortunately that one of the big Amazon fulfillment centers, they had a fire Mm -hmm. that would have happened pandemic or not. Um, You know, and, and so that's where a good business person has planned for that. Um, You know, and, and uh, you know, and, 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 and where Amazon plans also, I mean, you know, they, they typically don't have all of a company's product in one place so they can switch and, and all sorts of things. Now it might mean a delay. And of course this whole thing has meant delay. I mean, you know, I, I can't get Amazon overnight in some cases anymore. And it's like, Oh man, we were spoiled. (laughs) Right. No, it did. It definitely had the impact, but uh, from that standpoint, sometimes it can be a little like frustrating for your people in your warehouse Mm -hmm. when you're sending out your shipments. So we're sending shipments Mm -hmm. every week. So we're really trying to plan two Mm -hmm. or three weeks in advance. And we might have to send it to six different warehouses. Right. Mm-hmm. And they're like, it's 12 shirts. Why mm-hmm. am I splitting this up? Right. But when a warehouse burns down, mm-hmm. you're like, I'm sure glad that we send yeah, this. That they're was two shirts. Green light <laughs> fulfillment, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, and, and to, to shorten those shipping windows. Mm-hmm. But it really works in situations mm-hmm. like that. Right. Where one factory goes or one warehouse goes mm-hmm. down, your whole distribution channel doesn't mm-hmm. go down. Right. You know, and, and yeah, I mean, it, this is just very interesting times to, to see how businesses are adapting and changing. And I think small business owners obviously are, are in many cases, we're going to have to make, you know, some people are now becoming small business owners because they got furloughed, their company closed, you know, all these various things. And so your book was very interesting to me. Um, again, it's called You Are Not a Loser because it did, it talked about some of the, the problems that you had and, um, you know, in, in detail. And I love the part at the end where you talked about where they, the people that you, you talked about, you know, because the whole time they, they're not real, they're not a real person, but they were, they were real people, um, well, they are, yes. you know, and, and so, yeah, that to me, that was just curious because you do always want, well, where are they now? Um, right. but one of the things that, that you talk about is, that as the founder, the entrepreneur, the person who had that vision, it's always going to be, we should always be the top salesperson. So talk to us a little bit more about that because there are some people who think, Ugh, I don't want to do that. I want to hire that done. Right. That's not what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's counterintuitive. It is. And I will tell you, in my, in my experience, that entrepreneurs are typically the best salesmen for their company. Mm-hmm. So there's going to be a few exceptions where you have like a really super bright analytical person that's just like, I'm not comfortable talking in front of people. Right. But for the most part, mm-hmm. entrepreneurs, small business owners, no one will ever share your passion mm-hmm. for the business, period. Mm-hmm. Now, there may come a day when it just makes no more sense for you to be on the sales right. revenue generating side of the business. Mm-hmm. But my encouragement would be fight that off as long as possible. Mm -hmm. And I say that from personal experience. Mm -hmm. So the first startup that I was in had investors. Mm -hmm. I was 30 years old. I don't know. Like, you know, there's no playbook for it when it's your first time doing it. Mm -mm. And I was like, I guess I'm supposed to sort of be the leader here. I'm supposed to Now I manage. Right. It was not, though, that I thought I was above sales. Mm -hmm. Had nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. I just was like, I guess this is what my role is now. Mm-hmm. We hired sales reps. A typical sales rep would go on 60 sales calls a month. They'd close about 30% of those into new mm-hmm. clients. Now, sadly, I didn't look at the metrics really until it was too late. Mm-hmm. If you send me on those sale, same 60 sales calls, I'm closing 75%. Mm-hmm. Now, why is that? Not because the, the, the sales rep is a bad rep. Right, especially it's if it because, paid on commission. <laughs> right, it's because I'm the person who signed up the first 30 companies to use our service. I'm the person who Mm -hmm. got Domino's, Applebee's, Mm -hmm. Steak and Shake, AMC Mm -hmm. Theaters. 
I've heard every reason why they don't want to use your service. Right. And I've developed a very thoughtful mm -hmm. response to it. They're learning on the mm -hmm. fly mm -hmm. how to uh, you know, overcome objections. Mm -hmm. The other thing is they're talking to the person who started the company. Right. N again, no one is ever going to share your passion for the mm -hmm. business. No one, mm -hmm. not a spouse, not a relative. It will mean more to you than anyone else. Mm -hmm. And that comes across in those sales meetings. It just, it does. And mm -hmm. so when I went back and I looked at the math, the difference, we were charging $50 a month per location. Mm -hmm. Average client had three um, locations. 30%, the difference between a 30% mm -hmm. uh, closure rate and 75%, $4,000 a month, repeating Oy. business. Mm -hmm. So you start adding that up over several mm -hmm. months, mm -hmm. we were leaving so much business on the table. Right. So I'm just telling people from personal experience, mm -hmm. Put it off as long as possible. Mm -hmm. Be the rainmaker. You're the person that has that passion mm -hmm. until you absolutely can't mm -hmm. fit all of that in in the day and you've mm -hmm. got some of the best people on your team. Be that number one sales mm -hmm. rep for your company. Right. You know, and the hard part for the, the business owner, especially when we're first starting out, is the word delegating. <laughs> you know? And of course, that's one of the best things that we should be doing. You know, I, I you know, laughingly said we hate doing invoicing. Okay, then you hire somebody who does it. Mm -hmm. the, you know, as that business owner, stick with doing what you do best, which is selling your product or your service. And and and, and maybe I shouldn't use the word selling because so many people go, ooh, sales. Well, get yeah. over it, folks. You know, we're yeah. all we're all sales revenue persons. generating, whatever you uh, yeah, want to call it. Yeah, you know, whatever you know, making connections. Um, you know, and and so hire it done. The 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 other things, you know, whether it's invoicing, whether it's order fulfillment, you know, whatever it is, obviously depends on on your business. But you still then, because you have delegated, that allows you to continue being that number one face of your company. Right. You know, and there's a bit of a, I've, I've had people ask me this for, because I'm like, you know, entrepreneurs, we're, we're the bottleneck in many cases. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, we want everything we to go through We don't want to us. delegate. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, but now you're telling me I should be delegating. But then you're saying, don't do this. Don't give up the sales. I'm like, mm -hmm. yes, here's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Delegate everything else. Mm -hmm. Right. Keep that sales role as long mm -hmm. as you can. Mm -hmm. Right. And it is hard, you know, especially if funds are tight. But mm -hmm. of course, there's, there's the, the, the caveat that if you're able to go out and make more sales, then you have more money to pay the people that are, are you know, that you're delegating to. So that's kind of the, the way to think. And stuff might be tight. I mean, you know, you talk in your book about some of the ways that, that, that you and your wife, because, you know, she, <laughs> she was very active in, in making, you know, some of these decisions. You know, you did some things that some people might not be comfortable with. I mean, you know, and, and, but, you know, there's, there's a lot of ways to get things done now. Um, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I think maybe one of the things that we all need to remember is we don't have to hit the million dollar mark our first year. Right. No, no, this is, it's a marathon. It's not mm -hmm. a sprint. Mm -hmm. And we talk about delegating. There are so many tools because of the internet today. Right. I mean, there's sites like Upwork. Mm -hmm. You can find people all over the world mm -hmm. to delegate right. work mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. for a fraction of the cost. People mm -hmm. out there are like, I just want to work. Right. You can find really qualified people mm -hmm. for fee levels that mm -hmm. fit almost any budget. Right. Oh, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. You know, I use Fiverr. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 you know, a, a little, a little on the pandemic here, it'll be interesting because I know there are a lot of people who are now saying, okay, bring it back, bring it home, bring it to the U S. Okay. Well, what that's going to do is that's going to create more opportunities if it's able to come back. I mean, you know, there's, there's the thing, you know, you know if you build it, they will come. Well, you got to build it first. Um, mm -hmm. But I think we're going to see, hopefully, maybe many people who are doing things as a, as a side hustle, second business, new business that, that we have outsourced before, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so that'll be, what's interesting is, you know, are we able, and, and, you know, I'm not, I, if, there are reasons people outsource, you know what the, the, the cost is, is, you know, usually the biggest one as a business owner, you do have to look at that. You know, if you can save money by outsourcing overseas, that is a big factor in your decisions. And then it becomes a personal decision as to, you know, whether you're going to do that or not. 
you know, let's say, let's just be honest about that. But for most people, we need to make money and, you know, so we're, we're going to outsource things. But yeah, it really will be interesting to see how many things start coming back into the U.S. And I think it's going to be a lot of the service type of things where you have a lot of people who are doing those, you know, those, those web design, those, um, those things that they can do in the evenings and in the weekends and, um, uh, you know, all of those various things. And you're going to see a great increase in demand in delivery type services, right. mm -hmm. you know, providing those uh, with more of oh, us ordering yeah. online mm -hmm. and more of us wanting stuff. Mm -hmm. I want it today. I want it in an hour. Yep. Um, so there's going to be lots of services that, mm -hmm. that are not only outsourced, mm -hmm. but can't be outsourced anywhere, but domestically. Right. Yeah. Yeah, there, so there's going to be a balance, mm -hmm. I think, always between those two. Right. You know, and, and it's going to take a while to shake out, especially, say, a restaurant. Um, you know, uh, here in, in Georgia, we opened back up for restaurants having people in them several weeks ago. A great portion of worse restaurants still aren't doing it. You know, there's, there's a variety of reasons for that, mm -hmm. but many of them have still been able, and, and, you know, it's very tragic for those that have to close. I mean, that's just, that's horrible. That's awful. I hate that. But many of them have really adapted to delivery and takeout and they think it's great, but you're right. You've got to hire a bunch of people. You know, there's only so much that, uh, you know, or even, you know, Uber and, and all of those, mm -hmm. they're going to have to hire up too. Right. For sure. It's, it's just, yeah, it's, it, it is creating, I think, as many opportunities, I, I, you know, we can't even conceive of all the opportunities that it's creating. Agreed. No. And we won't know for a while. There's going to mm -hmm. be stuff that still comes out. There's mm -hmm. some really brilliant people out there right now working mm -hmm. on technologies that will require, still require some mm -hmm. human component to that. So right. I'm excited to see the positives mm -hmm. of right. oh, yeah. This because there is certainly, the you know, side. many bad things, um, you know, and we feel bad for companies and, and people who are suffering. And, and there, there is unfortunately going to be a lot of companies that close. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, there's also a part of me that thinks, were they set up right to start with? Now, some of them, I mean, it's just simply out of their control, um, say a restaurant, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. if you no longer could, could function, well, that's really not your control. But I think in, in some cases, it could be, Maybe they had too many staff, you know, maybe they, you know, all these various things. And so now they're going to have to adjust. Um, I think one of the big adjustments that we're going to see, and this is just purely a guess on my part, is I, you know, I, I mentioned it. I think a lot of people are going to continue working from home. I think of many businesses that you used to, as you know, you used to ha have everybody going into the office. Mm. I think they're going to look at it and go, you know what? We just survived three months of not really many problems. Once we got everything settled with, okay, this person needs a laptop and this person needs that and yada, yada, yada. Um, I think they're going to determine it, that paying rent for a lot of space when they really don't need to, that's, you know, offices might, you know, might be going by the wayside. No. And I do, you know, you've read, I've read a lot of articles about what this might do to the commercial mm -hmm. real estate business. And for sure, you're going to see where companies have found they can save money, still be as productive, keep their employees healthy, right? Um, offer essentially sort of, I, I think a lot of people who had never worked from home, mm -hmm. I had not done very much. I typically would always be in the warehouse. Mm -hmm. um, I found that, you know, I can find a way to work from mm -hmm. home. Right. You know, we, we, we all adapt, but I definitely think, um, I've heard stories though about the people that are going back in, mm -hmm just some of the challenges of that now like oh, you can only mm -hmm. walk clockwise around mm -hmm. the office and i'm like right. what happens if you accidentally pass up the thing I that know. was right here do i gotta gotta go all mm -hmm. the way back around see so i do that in the grocery store i'm like oh i'm in the one way i if can i just back up is is it right. is it does it work if i just back up <laughs> Um, you know, and, and I think that the challenge will be with, with all of it when we start really reopening is we are social people, social distancing. And, and, you know, I, I, we never should have called it that we should have called it physical distancing because we're social, you know, we have to be social. Mm -hmm. We want to be close to people. You know, we want to, we want to shake hands. We want to hug. We you know, need to look over somebody's shoulder as they're typing on the computer. So that's going to be the tricky part. And, and I know people who have gone back into offices have said that really is one of the most difficult things is not being able to, you know, to, to be close to coworkers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely going to be, a, a, it's going to be tough to adapt to that component. Mm -hmm. um, but 
I'm confident that, you know, over time we'll mm -hmm. ease our way back into right. that. And right. this will just be a just crazy uh, spot right. in mm -hmm. world history for, yep. for sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I just had a product thought for you. Sure. Let's hear Your it. monkey, yeah. the, oh, the yeah, flying yeah. monkey. <gasps> yeah. He could be delivering messages. Okay. Hey, look, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, so the great thing about the, so people are like, what is he talking okay, about? Okay. Tell us about the monkey because the monkey actually has his own chapter in the book. He does. <laughs> and it's basically because the, the lesson I learned was, you know, don't ever like dismiss where business might come from. Mm -hmm. Um, that you just never know where your next mm -hmm. revenue stream is right. going to be. And there's a product called the Superfly Monkey. It mm -hmm. is like a 12-inch stuffed animal that you put mm -hmm. your fingers in its hands, mm -hmm. you pull the body back, it turns into a slingshot, you launch it, it screams as it flies through the air. Mm -hmm. uh, it used to be a B to C business. So we mm -hmm. sold a lot to consumers. Because right. you think Over the this is a thing that kids want. Right. Over the past five to seven years, it's really been a B to B business for mm -hmm. us. And we screen print the capes with companies logos and they hand them out at trade shows. Mm -hmm. So first of all, it grabs people's attention at trade shows, this thing right. that's flying in the air, screaming. Mm -hmm. Second mm -hmm. thing, it meets the component, it's small. Mm -hmm. So people like to be able to tuck it into a suitcase when they're leaving a show. Mm -hmm. um, but that story there is my wife and I said, hey, we're gonna do this website <laughs> for this flying screaming monkey. Mm -hmm. And she's like, they're not be counting on that monkey to pay our mortgage. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of like this famous quote, now, did it pay our mortgage? I don't know. But within the first five years, we'd done a million dollars in sales in the monkey. Of flying, and, screaming monkeys. Right. And so the margins aren't huge, mm -hmm. but, and it's a volume business, but that's okay. And I've said, look, the business has really slowed over time. There aren't mm -hmm. as many, but I, and now that there's no trade shows, we're really, oh, sales yeah. are really mm -hmm. slow. Mm -hmm. At some point, trade shows will come back and mm -hmm. maybe the people come back and buy them. But I said, I'm not closing that website. Right. until I just stop getting sales altogether. Mm -hmm. And it just doesn't happen. We're mm -hmm. selling something every month and now we're over a decade later mm -hmm. still selling that thing. Right. But yeah, it's, um, mm -hmm. that also led to uh, the subtitle of my, or a little quote at the top of my mm -hmm. book that says, uh, my dad sells monkeys on the internet. <laughs> and my daughter was young. She was with my wife at the dentist. Mm -hmm. the, the hygienist was, had his hands in my wife's mouth and he asked my daughter, um, what does your dad do mm -hmm. for work? She said, my dad sells monkeys on the internet. Now, there's no <laughs> way to recover from that. Because no. if my wife says, well, no, no, he doesn't sell live animals. Instead, he sells a 12 inch stuffed animal that stuffed flies monkeys. and screams through the air. Like that doesn't really make no. the story that much better. No. So I love that my daughter put my wife in that spot. That was mm -hmm. uh, one of my I favorites. love it. I love it. But yeah, I'm thinking, you know, you can, you, the, the, the monkey can have a message for somebody and you can fling it across the office since we can't get close to him anymore. That is actually a great idea. You can have a little briefcase. <laughs> okay, Come up Wally. with all sorts of ways. If, uh, if you sell this, I, I want to cut. I owe you royalties for sure. <laughs> for sure. We'll get the but, paperwork yeah. drawn up. You know, as you mentioned, this is one of those things, you know, that, that we, as an entrepreneur, always have to think about, you know, how can we repackage, repurpose something? And I think now we're really going to find that, that we have to do a lot of things like that. So, you know, was it a child's toy? Sure. Okay. How can we turn it into something that is for businesses? Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, one of the, the big things that, that I see people having to, to redo is I connect with a lot of professional speakers and trainers. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a long time before we're in front of groups of people. So if you can't do what you do on Zoom or whatever the platform is, it, you're going to have problems, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so that's going to be one of the things that people need to redo. And, and so maybe it's, okay, we're not going to present to 500, but we're going to do 20 at, uh oh, I can't do that math. Um, <laughs> smaller groups, smaller groups. Right, it's Friday. I can't do that math. Um, or a lot more one-on-one, -on -one, you know, things like that. So, you know, people are having to redo what it is that they've done. And that's, that is one of the other things that you talk about in your book is that we never should stop hustling. We've got to always kind of be looking for that next thing. Right. No. And that's a, that's a lesson I definitely mm -hmm. learned. Um, and what I mean by hustle is that, like you said, entrepreneurs generally are mm -hmm. going, okay, what's next? What's mm -hmm. next? Mm -hmm. How do I do this different? And the challenge is the longer you remain in a startup, mm -hmm. the harder, the easier it is, I should say, to get away from that. Right. Things are going smoothly. Life mm -hmm. is good. Yeah. You're having fun. 
Mm -hmm. um, and I will tell you though, that the way I, the way it helped me was if you ask this question, mm -hmm. if your business revenue and personal income were to be cut in half tomorrow, mm -hmm. what would you do? Right. And if you don't have an answer to mm -hmm. that and you're a small business owner, mm -hmm. there's a chance that you've likely lost or losing your hustle. Mm -hmm. Does that mean you're not working? No, you're probably working tremendously hard. Right. What mm -hmm. it means is what's next mm -hmm. is not at the forefront of your mind. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is because that exactly happened to me. Mm -hmm. So I lost my hustle. Mm -hmm. When you have 10 years of 25% year over year growth, 16 employees you buying, you buying houses, <laughs> they're buying houses, they're mm -hmm. getting married, they're having kids. Mm -hmm. How could I possibly think of anything else? Mm -hmm. And then suddenly when you lose the licensing rights to your biggest segment of business oh. and you cut $2 million in sales right off, and then that hurts. you have your other big seasonal business mm -hmm. start getting commoditized by overseas manufacturers mm -hmm. selling directly online. Mm -hmm. You see that business get cut and you're like, wait a minute, I haven't been looking for mm -hmm. that next thing. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's just, if you keep your hustle alive, mm -hmm. there's a chance that when something falls off, mm -hmm. you can pivot. Right. And um, maybe that side hustle becomes something that with a little work mm -hmm. grows into your main hustle. Right. And then that main job becomes more of your side hustle. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a balance. But as entrepreneurs, we really have you know, it's, it's sort of the beauty of being an entrepreneur that we can shape shift our careers mm -hmm. relative to business climate and consumer needs. Right. We can react mm -hmm. faster and more nimbly mm -hmm. than big corporations can. Mm -hmm. They can't change overnight mm -hmm. what they're doing. But as a small business owner, if you have your feet in a few different places, mm -hmm. there's a chance that you can redirect your energy mm -hmm. and sort of keep that business going. Right. Right. Yeah. The monkey is a great example. You know, you've mm -hmm. got this website, you're selling to kids. It's like, Ooh, you know, you still sell the kids. I mean, you know, but, right. but then you also, okay, this is also a business thing. So you can have a totally different website. I mean, also, you know, because you don't want to give mixed messages that gets very confusing. You know, an eight year old doesn't want a corporate logo on monkey's cape. Um, but you know, it's, it, it is kind of, and, and I think that's one of the things that I think now people are having to learn to hustle. You know, they were in, you know, they worked for corporations for years. They, you know, they might've owned their own business and were doing well with it, but that's changing too. So they're having to learn to hustle. Right. And the, in a corporate world, you generally think, what would I do if I lost my job? Right. Um, as a small business owner, you, a lot of times you, you might think, what do I do if I just go out of business? Mm -hmm. But not a ton of us think, what would happen if my business was cut in half and mm -hmm. my income was cut in half? Right. It puts you in this really weird space mm -hmm. where, okay, so I'm still making money, but maybe mm -hmm. not as much as I want. Right. Consumers are still buying from me, but just mm -hmm. not as much as before. So do I dig do in I and try to fix yeah. this or am I, do I have to go another way? And if I go another way, what happens mm -hmm. to this? It's, it's really just mm -hmm. about being prepared right. as much as you can. Mm -hmm. And if you need, your life to be a little bit less chaotic. Mm -hmm. Maybe small business isn't for you. No. Like not everyone, it's not everyone is a fit for that. And mm -hmm. maybe you just need something where, hey, I'm going into this corporate environment and I focus on this right. one thing. Mm -hmm. But if that's not you, like it's probably mm -hmm. not me. Right. Um, you need to have multiple things going at a time. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I worked with a woman like that one time. We were in an agency and and uh, 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 marketing agency where you never know 15 minutes to the next what's going to happen because you've got multiple clients, they've got multiple needs, blah, 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 blah. I think that's the greatest thing in the world. I mean, you know, for me to have to do a to-do list and a calendar, I, I have started doing that just to keep my mind on track, but that's mm -hmm. not what I do. I mean, I, I'm more go with the flow, do what needs, you know, all of those things. She did not like that. Not at all. I mean, she wanted to know at, you know, at, at eight o'clock in the morning, she wanted to know what she was doing at three fifteen. Um, you know, and, and so the agency life just wasn't for her. And she went back into corporate America where you knew every second of the day, what you were going to be doing. And of course she thrived because that mm -hmm. was her personality. Right. No, that's great. And it sounds like I'm exactly like you. 
those to-do lists and all of that drive me nuts. Meanwhile, I have a child who loves to, I joke, make a to-do list, a reminder to make a to-do list. I mean, That's it's- my husband. It's, mm-hmm. it's just, we've got to check everything off. Mm-hmm. Everybody's right. different. Right. Yeah, it's funny. One of the big memes that keeps going around on, on Facebook is, you know, Biggest waste of money this year, 2020 calendars. <laughs> and I actually use mine more. Um, and part of that is because I find now that it is harder for me to focus because there's so much going on. Um, mm-hmm. you know, so, it, it, so I have to write it down and, and, and then, you know, remember to check it off, you know, all those various things. But, um, you know, and, and that, but I also have learned that there are things that I write on the piece of paper because then I can just move the piece of paper from week to week, <laughs> you know, and, and, you know and, and then it's like, okay, well, we'll check it off when we need to. Um, but, but yeah, so, you know, one of the things that you also talk about in your book is networking. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's, that's one of those things. Now it's very difficult. I mean, clearly we're not networking in person. Who knows what that's ever going to come back to. Um, it will, I mean, you know, we're going to get back to, to meeting in person. That's just, you know, that's, that's the way things will go. But it, when I moved to Atlanta from, from Denver, I networked a lot. Um, and part of it was I just needed to meet people, but I networked mm-hmm. a lot. I, you know, I ate more chicken than most people should ever eat chicken. Um, now, I didn't network at night. I don't do evening events um, because that's, that's home time. But mm-hmm. there were days where I would, or weeks where I would be out every single lunch. Um, you know, and, and then I finally figured out, okay, I'm seeing the same people, so... Mm-hmm. I don't have to go to, to all of these, but how do you network to really make good connections? Because that's what it's about. It's, yeah, sometimes I go for the program and to see people and all of those things, but we're supposed to be networking to be making connections. So how do you do that? Well, I'll tell you, it's a, it's a recent thing for me. So anyone who's listening going, I hate networking. I don't do networking. It's okay. You, you mm-hmm. can fix this because I was there. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've been on my own for almost 20 years. Mm-hmm. And the moment that I got comfortable with where I was, mm-hmm. I stopped networking. Like right. completely. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm not looking for a job. Mm-hmm. I don't need help from someone. I don't need to swap stories with someone who might then take my idea Mm -hmm. and use it. All of these reasons. And it was like a year and a half ago, I looked up from my desk and Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't know anybody. Right. So people would be like, Hey, well, you know about that company over here. And I was like, "Mm, don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, so-and-so, right. He does the same thing as you. He just lives a street over. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, never met him. Mm -hmm. And I realized I didn't know anyone. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that I had realized that I noticed from my questions before when I said I wasn't looking for a job, Mm -hmm. I didn't need help. Mm -hmm. I, 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 Mm -hmm. everything was about what's in it for me. Right. To me, that is less networking and that's just more asking for favors. Yeah. That's or swapping information. (laughs) And so thanks to a a mentor that I meet with on a quarterly basis, Mm -hmm. he gave me sort of a guiding principle that Mm -hmm. I use now when I meet people. Mm -hmm. And I say, this question, whether it's the beginning or at the end, and it's, what can I do for you? Mm -hmm. The moment you ask someone, what can I do for you? Mm -hmm. It changes the dynamic of the meeting Mm -hmm. completely. Right. And you're not meaning, what can I do? What can I sell to you to do for you? No, I'm saying literally, what can I do Mm -hmm. for you? I'll tell people, look, I don't babysit. Mm -hmm. I've already done the kids and I'm joking, but I, um, I've, when you ask that question, it takes mm-hmm. people off guard, but then right. they go, oh, this person is mm-hmm. trying to create an actual connection mm-hmm. with me, not a one-off meeting. Mm-hmm. And what I found is, you know, half the people will not ask me for anything, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I, half the people will. And they'll right. send me a note say, I have a friend who's thinking about selling on Amazon. Mm-hmm. Could you tell them about it? Sure. Mm-hmm. I had a guy say, look, there's a guy who's a YouTube star in my condo. Mm-hmm. Um, he wants to make his own clothes. Can you talk to him about private label and overseas manufacturing? Sure. Mm-hmm. Another person, you know, um, my wife is leaving her corporate job to just start her own thing. Can mm-hmm. you just talk about some of the things you went through? Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, and then what I do is I keep track of those and I've built a networking tree mm. and I talk about, I list on there what you did for me mm-hmm. and what they're doing for me is just, I'm learning from these conversations. Right. And then I say, what you, what, what I did for you and mm-hmm. not in the, Hey, this is what I did for you. It's, mm-hmm. I want the other people to see it. Mm-hmm. Oh, someone asked him for help and he actually gave it. And on a mm-hmm. quarterly basis, I send that recap out. Ah. 
Yeah. And it's a way for me to stay in contact mm -hmm. with the people because otherwise what I'm saying is, oh, that was just a one-off meeting. I'm like, no, I'm wanting to create ongoing relationships mm -hmm. with you right. for the long term. Mm -hmm. And somewhere down the road, maybe I need some guidance, advice, mm -hmm. whatever. Now I have a person in this particular industry right. that I can reach out to and there's been ongoing communication. Even generally it's coming from my side. They always mm -hmm. respond, hey, thanks for the notes, good mm -hmm. to see you. Even this last time I did a video. Mm -hmm. So rather than writing up the mm -hmm. note, mm -hmm. I just record myself. Now that you have Zoom and we have all this right. equipment, I sent it out because I was like, this might be a little more uh, personable mm -hmm. for them. They can see- And we've all been stuck in hear. our bedrooms. <laughs> right. Uh, but I've found that once you take it from a me centered event mm -hmm. and make it sort more of a service. How can I help you? Mm -hmm. You can really create true networks of people that right. you can rely on long term. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and what I love about this is in, in some, many, most, you know, not, not all, but in, in, uh, there's no financial benefit. Now it could be that, you know, that they will do business with you. Um, you know, I, I think I might order a monkey just because the monkey looks cute. Um, you know, and, and, but you know, whoopee, you, you probably get 50 cents out of that. <laughs> you know? and, um, but you know, it's, and, and there are times where, you know, you might, there might be a huge, you know, financial transaction that happens, whether it's that you need something and you end up paying them or whatever, but it's more about that goodwill. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and because then if you do need something, you're able to ask them and they're not going to go, Oh God, it's Wally again. Um, they're going to, Oh my gosh, Wally, how can I help you? Mm -hmm. Right. So that, that's what it's really about is saying, mm -hmm. how do I build something for the long term? Mm -hmm. And also how do you keep learning? Right. There's no conversation mm -hmm. that I've left where I don't feel like I left not knowing something that I didn't mm -hmm. know. And mm -hmm. that's what I find. So exciting because as someone who's always looking to create and do mm -hmm. new things, this is just new information. I'm right. like, Oh, I never thought about mm -hmm. how they do that. That's mm -hmm. really interesting. How could I apply that theory to mm -hmm. what I do? Mm -hmm. Right. You and, and you mentioned in there something else that I think is very important. And that's the fact that you have a mentor and you talk about your mentor in your book, but you know, you have a million dollar business, a multi-million dollar business, and you still have a mentor but it almost didn't happen <laughs> you know and, and you do talk about that in the book but why is it important for people to, to have and be mentors yeah you know um my mentor has been such so what happens when you own a small business you you can be in a bubble mm -hmm. right and i need someone that i can say this is exactly like full on details. Mm -hmm. This is what's going on here. Mm -hmm. This is going on here. And someone from the outside, because mm -hmm. you know, always when you hear someone talking about their problems, generally mm -hmm. you're like, well, that's easy to fix. Right. Because I you're not that. in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. But when you're in situations, mm -hmm. it's not always a, it's not easy to see that. Mm -hmm. And so I found this is a great way for someone to mm -hmm. a offer me guidance, advice. Mm -hmm. Did you think about this? Plus I'm drawing on their experience, mm -hmm. but also occasionally be like, Hey, really like the way you did that. Mm -hmm. It's a way to occasionally get like, you know, things have been tough working hard. Mm -hmm. I don't always need people to pat me on the back, but it's not bad. Mm -hmm. But then if you can serve as a mentor to someone else, mm -hmm. when you have experience, now it's just another way, sort of like networking, where you're able to right. give back and draw on your experience to help someone else, else bypass some mm -hmm. of those um, missteps that mm -hmm. you took. And that's right. the same thing that my mentor is able to do for mm -hmm. me and say, look, I made this mistake. Mm -hmm. I handled it this way. Don't do that. And you're like, right. oh, okay, because that's how I would have, I would have exactly done it that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, it's just been super beneficial. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and and I think the same thing about mastermind groups. Um, you know, where it's just a small group of people, um, and and you know, and and we're talking about things. And there's a variety of ways to set up masterminds. And so if you're looking, you know, at, at joining one, check them out because there are some that you know are industry specific. There are some that don't have anybody in the same industry, you know, because there are things that you really don't want to be talking to, about with your competitors. Um, you know, it, it, well, it, but then sometimes it's good to talk to your competitors. I mean, you know, and, and 
and, and maybe they're in the same industry, but they're all the way across the country. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. and, and so all of these various things. And, and but yeah, I like masterminds. And, and of course, the funny thing is now, and maybe it's because we're all stuck at home in our second bedrooms and, you know, all of these various things, we're needing those connections. And so, you know, I'm going to encourage people to reach out and be finding and, and, you know, find those groups, find those mentors, offer to be a mentor. Um, I was talking with... Uh, I went to the University of Colorado and I'm part of a volunteer leadership team thing there. And so we've been doing Zoom things and, and they're going to start a platform where alumni can be mentors. And it's all going to be online because, you know, pandemic right. or not, we're not all in one place. And the person you might need to talk to might be halfway around the world, um, you know, and, and so it's going to be interesting to see how that gets set up. It's going to be fun because we'll be part of kind of the, the initial part of it, um, you know, and, and, and uh, yeah, and to me, it's always a two-way street. You know, I'm going to learn, as you said, I'm going to learn from them just as much as hopefully they'll learn from me. Yeah, no, that sounds like a great program. I really think there's, because if you always limit yourself to alumni in your area, mm -hmm. A, there may not be many. Right. And B, mm -hmm. if you've met them, then it's like, okay, mm -hmm. maybe this wasn't the right fit for mm -hmm. me. But you open up the world right. as a potential mm -hmm. way to hook up with alumni. Mm -hmm. That's right. awesome. I think right. they're doing a great job there yeah. with that. I look forward to hearing how that yeah. works out. Well, and of course, the first thing they're going to do, I mean, they're going to focus on 2020 graduates because mm -hmm. those, they just kind of got dumped out into the mm -hmm. world, um, you know, and, and uh, you know, and, and so that's what will be interesting is to, to really help them if possible, you know, it's, it's, it'll, it'll be a challenge. And of course, the fun part will be the fact that it's been a while since I was in college and, and I had, you know, I, I have an MBA and um like like you do but now they get very very specific and and so that's where i'm going to learn you mm -hmm. know is is you know they're able to to do things that are so much more um educational and, and things i mean it's just going to be I, yeah i think it's going to be very cool yeah no i think it's awesome you know and my assumption is that many universities are going to start doing things like that so you know if you're a college or even a trade you know trade school person contact your alumni foundation and see, you know, what, what can we do to help? Because that's, that's a great thing. And it's, it's a great way to network. I always tell people, you know, when you're looking to connect with people on LinkedIn, that's one of the things to look at is alumni because alumni want to help other alumni. They might be 30 years apart, you know, and, and 3000 miles, but alumni want to help alumni. Mm -hmm. Well, oh my gosh, Wally. See, this is why I set a timer because we're not anywhere near done in this conversation and we just have a couple minutes left. So it just means we have to, to chat again. So I look forward to doing that. In the meantime, show us your book again. Sure. Cool, cool. Here we go. You are not a loser and you have to read the book to find out why it's, it's called that. Um, very good book. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, I, I, the one thing I'm going to do, you've got a, a big list of, of resources in the back. I can't wait to, mm -hmm. to really delve into those and, and order some of those books. So that's great. But, but yeah, you know, I, I encourage folks to do that. Now it's not like you have a service or a product that you sell just to the general mm -hmm. public, but you know, it, you still have great information and, and you're a great resource. So tell people how they connect with you. Sure. And I want to make sure that, you know, I'm making this offer to you, but also any of your listeners, I'll just say what I say to people that I network with, what can I do for you? Mm -hmm. So if you have someone listening who has a question, needs help, just mm -hmm. wants to connect with someone, please reach out. So you can go to my website, wallacegustafson.com. You can send me an uh, email through there or find me on LinkedIn. Um, if you do it on LinkedIn, just make sure you set, you put a little note that you heard me on right. Deb's show mm -hmm. um, so that I just know you're not some random spammer because occasionally you get some of those where you're like, I don't know what this connection request mm -hmm. is. Um, yeah, because yeah, yeah. on LinkedIn, I tend to look, you know, do we have a lot of mutual connections? You know, right. and, and, and when we have people who are listening to this, we might not have any connections. So yeah, so be sure to mention the program. And the book itself is available on Amazon and Barnes. But if you're looking for an e-reader version, you can go to my website. At the top, you'll see a tab called Author Illustrator. To, uh, open that, click Business Book. You can download the e-reader version for free. Perfect. And if you want to learn all of the lessons, mm -hmm. I have them all recapped in chapters 31 and 32. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to read the book. You can just skip all the way to the end and say, let me just read what this guy did wrong so I make sure I, didn't, I don't do those. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, but I would love to help anyone if they have any questions at all. Great. You know, and, and as we said, we learn from the mistakes, from the mm -hmm. failures. You know, it'd be great if we were perfect and everything worked out, but it doesn't. You know, <laughs> and, and so the fact that you very willingly share this, I mean, you know, when I was reading the book, I really was thinking, oh my gosh, um, you know, and, and, but, and, and yeah, your wife is a saint, you know, we'll just say that here, you know, you, you can tell her, you know, that, that <laughs> you, know, you have but, a new, you have a new fan in my wife. I can tell you that. She, <laughs> finally, she, someone that'll tell you the somebody truth. Somebody knows. Yep. It's, right. it's always the spouse, you know, it's always the spouse. Um, but yeah, so I encourage people, you've got a blog, you've got all sorts of great information. So be sure to check out the website and it's Wallace Guffs gustafson.com um you know and and or you know find wally on on linkedin because yeah great information great resources awesome i really appreciate you having on the show as a blast i enjoyed the conversation and again anything i can ever do for you please let me know perfect i love it well do you have any final thoughts for everyone hmm now we you covered stumped. everything yeah i mean it's uh <laughs> You stop. I'm sorry if I just ruined your ending, Deb. Everything had gone so well. You're going to have to re record the ending there because I'm like, I don't know. She yeah, asked we, so we many did, good we questions. We covered everything. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, I feel I look, you gave me a great opportunity to talk to you. I love talking business. I love talking to people that are upbeat and excited like you are. And um, I appreciate you letting me share the notes on the book. And um, if anyone has any questions, please contact me. I'd love to connect. Perfect. I love it. Well, again, I'm Deb Creer. I've been having a wonderful time getting to know Wally Gustafson. And until next time, everyone have a great day. Tune in for our next program for even more trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. The Business Power Hour, hosted by Deb Creer, is proud to be part of the C-Suite Network.